Hello everyone, welcome to uh, another schematic analysis. This is going to be the classic fuzz face by Dallas Arbiter. Uh, the PNP version is the original. This is where the uh, transistors are kind of backwards and the power's kind of backwards. It's the original. Um, I just want to say before we get into this, uh, there's a lot of black magic that surrounds this circuit. Um, guitarists on forums have a tendency to get really woo-woo and imagine a bunch of stuff. But in this case, there's actually a lot of weird blood, uh, black magic going on in this circuit. Um, that being said, just everybody in the comments, just be nice. You know, just be nice. Just be helpful. Comment all your stuff. Tell me, tell me about the transistors you're using. But, you know, don't be a guitar jerk. I just thought I should uh, put a little thing in here for anybody who's building one of these and is trying to troubleshoot it. Uh, if you're having oscillations, start by throwing a cap right there or right here. Uh, I think 100 picofarads is probably a good place to start. Uh, but try to, you know, if, if that solves it, try smaller values until uh, you can really dial in the smallest value you can because this will uh, suck out high end if you have these there. The other thing is uh, some people will put resistors in series with this fuzz, or I can't remember, it might be here, before the, I don't know. Try that, <laughs> try it both ways, see if that fixes the thing. This is always a good thing to check. The negative voltage is a weird, weird thing, so watch for that. If you're using PNPs, you should be having uh, negative nine volts, not positive nine volts. If you're using NPNs, you gotta flip it, you gotta change it. Did I already mention the beta? Yeah, let's talk about that. Q1, the beta, or HFE rating, should be between 70 and 85. Uh, and then the Q2 should be, I think it's, a, yeah, let me look at my notes. Yeah, buck 20 to uh, 140 for those HFE ratings. Um, and that's for the original style, right? People build them with higher gain uh, transistors. Uh, and I, I haven't done that personally, but I think when you're doing that, it's important to keep this ratio. Q2 should be uh, higher gain than Q1. Um, if there are any other quick fixes for, for problems that people leave a comment, because uh, I'm sure there's a billion things and I haven't thought of all of them. So if you think of one of them, leave a comment. Help us all out, you know? Anyway, let's get into it. So, broad overview of this guy. Um, it's basically two common emitter amplifiers. Here's one, here's the other. Um, and then they've got a feedback network. Uh, this guy, this first common emitter amplifier is biased uh, heavily to one side, so you get asymmetrical clipping here. And then this one is biased right in the center of our available voltage, so this is a more symmetrical stage. Um, yeah, you can see it's it's got eleven components. I think is the uh, if you're counting the jacks, so it's an incredibly simple circuit. But every part uh, interacts with every other part, and inclu and uh, that includes stuff that's not even in the circuit. Your guitar can affect uh, what's going on internally, so. Uh, simple but complex circuit. Uh, okay, let's get into it. So, first thing to note is that our power is backwards. It says negative power right here, right? Because positive is ground and the negative terminal of our battery is going to be what we're calling VCC, right? Um, and, whoa, hello. And this is unusual for a lot of reasons. Uh, you just don't see it that much. Um, and in the original um, uh, pedal, these guys only ran on batteries. This had to be a nine volt battery. There's no jack um, available. You just had to open up that big old cast iron case and swap your batteries out. Um, yeah, and because of that, we're using NPN, uh, PNP transistors, excuse me. If you want, uh, I think a lot of modern versions will just flip that, where this will be a normal <laughs> uh, positive 9 volts, and these guys will be NPN transistors. Um, yeah, but not the original. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's get into the fun stuff. Oh, well, you know what? Actually, one more thing about this is that um, j there's nothing to clean up, 
like uh, power ripples in the power. So if you wanted to build one of these guys, I would suggest just putting a couple of capacitors to ground here, you know? Um, I think uh, an electrolytic at like 100 microfarads and then like a ceramic or something at uh, 0.1. 100, 100 uh, just so you have lots of voltage in case you need it. And then the little guy is for faster uh, uh, power spikes and stuff. Um, and that won't affect the tone of the thing. Uh, it, it just removes noise from the power. So you can get your fuzz face sounds even with that stuff. Um, yep. Moving on. Your guitar hits the input stage and then hits this high pass filter. High pass filter? High pass filter. Um, and this guy is gonna cut everything below 14 hertz. And human hearing is at 20 hertz. Uh, 20 to 20,000 hertz approximately. So uh, you won't hear bass reduction from that part of the circuit. Uh, like I said, like I already mentioned, it that number is approximate because every part of this circuit is reactive. You know, if you change stuff over here, it's gonna change what frequency you're, you're cutting, but basically it's too low to hear. Uh, yeah, so right here we have a common emitter amplifier, PNP style. If you wanna look up more details about that, because this is, like I said earlier, it's just two common emitter amps. Um, these guys flip audio 180 degrees out of phase. So if you're going up and down over here, you now you're going down and up over here. Um, uh, this one is biased right here, this node on the collector, right? Uh, in case you don't know, this is a uh, bass. Emitter is the one with the arrow and collector is the one that isn't the bass or emitter. Bass, emitter, and collector, that's what we call those. So this collector here is typically biased to the middle point. So it would be minus 4.5 volts for half of nine. But this guy, oh, you know what? I have a slide for this. This guy's biased at 0.7 volts. It's a diode drop. So uh, this guy is gonna be clipping asymmetrically. So basically your audio is gonna come in looking like this, but then the uh, one half of it, you know, if it goes above that certain threshold, will get absolutely smashed. And then when you come back down, the other half will be nice and smooth like you inputted, and then you'll get absolutely smashed, and then a nice So you get this sort of asymmetrical uh, distortion effect. Let's see, what else do I wanna say about this? Oh, this is a very low input impedance. Um, it's tricky to calculate because of how odd this circuit is, uh, and there's no buffering or anything. Um, so it's so low that your, uh, your guitar pickups will actually affect what's going on here. So um, when you see, you know, like uh, the JHS guys are always talking about riding your volume knob on fuzz pedals and put them first in your signal chain, and that is real stuff. Do that. Um, because uh, other guitar pedals, if you put them beforehand, will have buffers and all that stuff. And if you put a buffer before this, you don't get that uh, guitar pickup impedance thing. So you want, this wants to be the first thing. You want to just plug your guitar into this input, not other pedals, and then into this guy. Make this guy first. Uh, yeah, okay, so our input impedance, like I was saying, is very low. If you wanted to calculate it, uh, you could basically go, you know what, I don't feel like going through all this right now. So <laughs> just trust me, the impedance is low. Um, yeah, so the gain of this guy is very high, actually. Um, so yeah, let's do this. I'm gonna go over here. The uh, gain in voltage is equal to negative GM times RC. This negative sign is that 180 degree um, phase flip that uh, common emitter amplifiers have. Uh, so let's define some of this stuff, right? GM is equal to, not negative GM, but regular GM is equal to the emitter current over the thermal voltage. Now here's another thing <laughs> we gotta define. The thermal voltage is, a, well, it's like a thing for uh, transistors because they are affected by the temperature. 
Uh, ours, for our purposes, we're just going to call it 25 milliamps. Why can't I? Okay, that's milliamps right there. <laughs> I don't know why I, I can't draw over here. That's odd. Sorry, uh, VT is around. Let me squish it up. 25 milliamps. Um, and then just for simplicity, I'm not going to make you go through the whole thing. Uh, IE is equal to uh, about 22 milliamps. That's an A. So uh, if we plug these numbers into our original formula here, we get minus oh point. Wait a minute. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I'm skipping ahead a little bit here. Um, if you divide these guys, you get 0088. That's our um, GM right there. So that times uh, 33K, which is the uh, resistance to the collector. If we go back to our thing, it's this guy right here. Um, yeah, so that will equal negative, ah, ran out of space again. That will equal negative 290.4. However, that gets further reduced by this uh, feedback path down here. This will reduce the gain, and uh, it has some other uh, properties which we'll go through later. So that reduces the gain by about 100. So we end up with a gain of around... 190 we'll say that's our approximate gain for stage one for this common emitter amplifier right there let me just sum up again the important parts here this flips the phase 180 degrees this is biased to what was it a uh, diode drop i think it's point minus 07 volts which makes it clip asymmetrically and there's a bucket of gain here so it's going to clip a lot asymmetrically. Moving on to Q2, this is biased right to the middle point, that's minus, well, I don't have to draw it because it's right here, minus 4.5 volts, right? That is exactly halfway in our available voltage, so this is biased to the center of that, so the audio can wiggle freely, you know? Um, so because Q1 has so much gain, it's really hitting Q2 very hard. So there's a lot of clipping that can happen right here, but it's symmetrical this time. So you get asymmetrical clipping here, and then you blast into this to get uh, symmetrical clipping. Um, the feedback path uh, reduces the gain. It also um, uh, corrects for some non-ideal qualities of these uh, uh, transistors like like I mentioned like the thermal voltage stuff makes it a little less susceptible to you know the kind of garbage that happens when you use these types of parts so the gain of this stage is without going through all the calculations again it's slightly more than one let's do this feedback path real quick or we'll take our time so this is an interesting little uh, setup here because you got to think about this um, potentiometer is kind of two parts, right? There's the resistance from lug one to lug two, and then this capacitor acts as a ground for AC, right? So AC really only needs to see that much. And then the resistance from here to here is going to affect the DC uh, current. And then this little resistor uh, is basically a shunt for the feedback back to Q1, which will reduce the gain for the whole of this, for both uh, stages. Um, yeah, and the more feedback you get, the less gain you get. Uh, is there anything else we should, yeah, let's talk about the output stage. So, um, this filter, this high pass filter right here, uh, cuts some lows that are audible, but not a lot. Let me look at my notes. Where is it? About 31 hertz when the volume is all the way up. This is cutting 31 hertz, which is just within human hearing. Just scoops out some of those lows. 
And then as you turn the volume down, that increases the amount of resistance you have between these two points right here. So we end up with uh, more lows cut. Um, and I've, I've seen some people will uh, do a mod where instead of 500k here, you'll do 100k, which will affect how much. I think that will reduce the amount of lows in the whole thing and the whole output. Um, so that's a place, that's another place you can mod. Um, yeah, so, well, just to be clear, when you turn the volume down, you also cut out more of the bass, right? That's the relationship here. So uh, the output impedance, if we start uh, here looking out towards ground, uh, this again depends on where you see, where you set the volume knob, but maximum uh, there will be 500k going down to ground here. And you also have to remember that audio signals see both ends of your voltage as um, ground. So we got to consider this path here to our uh, negative uh, power, to our negative 9 volts. So basically, you get this cap, which is small enough, I'm just going to ignore it, and then you get uh, 470. So we have a 500k pot, this is at max volume, in parallel with our 470 ohm, oops, there should be a 7 in the middle of that, with our 470 ohm resistor to, uh, to our uh, voltage there, a negative voltage. So because uh, this is so much smaller than this guy, you can basically um, cancel that guy out. If you do the calculations, it ends up being 469, so whatever. It's, it's basically, this is your output impedance. Um, yeah, uh, and uh, yeah, like I said, that'll change with where you set the volume, but not by much. Um, that's all my notes, man. I think we've done it. So let's zoom out again and do an overview. So your guitar comes in, hits this capacitor, which gives it a, uh, filters out the low end, but below human hearing. This flips the phase 180 degrees, you get asymmetrical clipping. That goes into this stage where you get symmetrical clipping. This fuzz thing controls the amount of feedback, which will reduce the gain and stabilize these uh, transistors and fix some of the weirdness that comes with transistors. Um, the second stage flips the phase again, so the output is now in phase with the input again. Um, this filter cuts out a little bit of the lows, but probably lower than your guitar is going to actually produce. Um, and that will change with the volume. Powers backwards, I think I already said that. That's how a fuzz face works. Yeah.